Alright, alright, alright. Let me find my notes. Alright, so hey you guys, it's Kevin. I'm back again for another part of this My Haunted Apartment series. Um, I hope you're enjoying it all so far. Um, I am enjoying sharing all these experiences with you guys. Um, if you haven't seen part one or part two, then I would strongly suggest you go and do that because they all kind of link into each other and lead on to the next one. Um, so we have four parts in this series. This part um, is going to be focusing on the topic of the physical realm that we live in, what we can see, what we can feel, etc. So it's going to be experiences that I have had physically. So to start off, I'm just going to get this one out of the way because I kind of briefly touched on this one in the previous part, in part two, and this is about the cat. So when I was cat sitting this cat for, I think it was about two or three days, um, this cat would go into every single room into in my apartment except for um, the spare bedroom. And I don't know, I never knew why it would never really go in there. I would like try and throw like its toy in there and everything and it just wouldn't be interested it seemed like. Just a weird vibe from that room specifically. Now they always say that animals are a lot more susceptible to these kind of things. They're a lot more aware of these kind of things. I honestly don't really know where they where we have gotten that idea from to be honest i really don't know but um m maybe because they just kind of take it as it is the same they say the same about children and babies like they kind of can notice things a lot more than us a lot more than like you know like teenagers and fully grown adults and stuff like that and i think maybe what what the kind of like logical reason behind that is because like say when you're an adult you kind of can tend to like glaze over things or like brush things off your shoulder or have your reasons as to why it's not paranormal whereas like with a kid they just take it as it is if they see a ghost there they see a ghost there there's not much that they can do about it and um, they're not going to be like oh no that's not a ghost just that's the wind um, so that's probably where it came from but anyways there was another room that this cat kind of was a bit weird around as well which was the bathroom um whenever the cat went into the bathroom I would notice that like its tail would just stand straight up and I don't know it would just kind of look a bit like cautious or something in that room I don't really know cat behavior or cat language so I don't exactly know what the cat's tail standing up means but um it did act a little bit differently in the bathroom so I don't really know like if that's I don't know what that is. So my second experience is, this one is not actually technically inside the apartment, um, but I found that this one was extremely creepy and it really just freaked me out. And I don't know if it was paranormal or what it was, but basically my apartment was located just across the road from a graveyard. I know, brilliant. And my balcony and my main window had a beautiful view looking right over this graveyard. Now, I mean like this graveyard was literally just right across the road from my apartment. So one day I was in work and I was coming home for lunch. And while I was sitting down eating my lunch, I looked out my bedroom window and I spotted across the road, there was some man just standing in the graveyard, like literally just standing like a statue with his head up. And he was, when I looked over at him, he was looking at my apartment. He wasn't looking at the window that I was looking out of, but he was looking out of one of my other windows. And I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> what is this? What's happening? Um, he, as far as I remember, he stood there for about 15 minutes. And at one point he kind of like started moving his head to like look elsewhere, look over there. At first I thought he was like taking a piss, which first of all, that's not a great place to take a piss. And But um, it lasted, or he was there for about 15 minutes. So just standing like a, very still, just kind of like moving his head, looking around. And I just thought it was incredibly, incredibly, incredibly odd. And it freaked me out. Now, I don't know if that's paranormal or what, but I thought it was worth mentioning. So my third and final physical, physical experience with this entity that is in my house um, is to do with the hot press in my apartment. So I would always use the hot press in my apartment as just a form of storage. I think a lot of people in their houses would use their hot press um, as storage. It's just that little room that has your boiler in it um, and maybe one or two other things. So you kind of just like chuck 
everything in there. You're just like, oh, I'll just throw it in the hot press and I'll deal with it another time. So basically I did that with everything. I like put my old TVs in there. I put boxes from everything in there. I put my Christmas decorations in there. Everything just got thrown into that hot press. But it, it started off fairly kind of like light and easy with this hot press. Like it would be... I would walk by the door of the hot press and I'd notice that the light was switched on in the hot press, which is funny because I never really go into the hot press. Like it would be very rare only if I was to throw something in or take something out, which would be quite rare. Um, so I did notice a good few times that the light was switched on and I would switch it off, be a little bit freaked out because I'd be like, okay, why is that on? But maybe somebody ac when they were visiting accidentally brushed by it or looked in, I don't really know. So I was like, all right, okay, nothing, nothing too crazy going on there. And then come to, this is coming full circle right now, guys, but come to my day of moving out from this. Oh my God, what are these dogs barking at? Oh my God, I'm home alone, you guys, and these dogs are freaking me out. They always make me so paranoid because they always just bark at the wind. Like, anyways, so this is the, this takes place in the day that I was moving out. So it was kind of like a goodbye from this entity, it seems like. That's what I'm taking it as anyways. But I was, I had my family over and we were all packing my stuff, which took forever. Like, guys, one person, you'd be surprised how much stuff accumulates over two and a half years. Like, I had so many bags of random crap. Um, anyways. But yeah, so my family were helping me move out. They were packing my bags and... Um, all of us left then to load the car and then I came back to like grab something else or whatever and when I came back into the apartment I shit you not guys I was everybody left this apartment at the same time to go down to the car and then when we came back we were all together as well so nobody the door was locked as well I locked the door behind me nobody came back without anyone else there was nobody but himself so we were all literally all together when we came back upstairs to the apartment unlocked the door opened the door and guys i literally i'm not even like joking the hot press the door to the hot press was wide open wide open all of the con literally every thing that i threw into that hot press over the two and a half years was spilled out of the hot press on the floor everywhere all these boxes even the tv was like pulled out oh my god guys i <laughs> i shit you not i had never been so freaked the fuck out and i was so at that point i was like thank god i'm leaving this apartment because god knows what would happen to me if i stay any longer i was so freaked out i did not understand what actually happened like i don't we, like we didn't even really like say that much about it we were just like all right, that is freaky, but bye. Like, chucking my two says bye. And I literally did that. I was just like, I grabbed my last bit of stuff and I just walked out that door. I was like, okay, bye bye entity, whatever it is. But I'm, I'm just gonna take that as a farewell from the ghost or whatever. But yeah, that's all that I have for the physical um, aspects of this haunted house. Um, apartment series. I hope you guys have enjoyed this part and I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Join me in the last and final part which is going to be a little bit more special. In these first three parts I haven't had any crazy editing, I haven't had anything too cuckoo ca choo going on but in the part four which is the final part we're going to be talking about our final discussions. We're going to add one or two extra things that might have been missed in the previous parts and we're gonna do a little bit more production onto it as well to kind of like freak you out a little bit but no screamers I don't do jump scares I don't do screamers because we I don't need anybody having heart attacks now anyways so thank you guys for watching join me in the next part I'll see you again have a nice day don't get haunted stay safe and yeah bye Mwah.